Hey, this is Digital by Computing. Today we're gonna to look at my favorite interview questions that I generally pose to system engineers slash system administrators when I'm interviewing for position. So most, as most interviews generally start, we're gonna go through some basic, you know, tell me about yourself, what are your top skills, what can you bring to the role? But then we cut into the technical stuff, which is the more enjoyable stuff for me, and it really gets me to gauge where somebody is at. Because from a behavioral point of view, a lot of people can answer questions quite well, and you can be pretty happy with them as a person. They come across really well. They could be a good team player. They may have impressed their previous uh, team and management, etc. But I want somebody that's gonna be, be able to have the skills to be able to perform the role that they're after. So it really depends on the role that I'm looking for, but um, I like to break it down into certain categories. I'll talk about, say, Windows Server, I'll talk about Linux, I'll talk about networking, I'll talk about virtualization, I'll talk about cloud. I'll ask questions really all around that, but it's really catered to um, the, the type of person that I'm looking for. So if I'm really looking for a generalist, somebody that is um, skilled across a number of different technologies from systems and even perhaps some networking, I'll ask questions around all of that. If I'm looking for somebody that's more focused and wants to become, uh, you know, maybe the role is just for somebody around Windows Server and Active Directory and dealing with a Microsoft suite of stuff, I'll cater it to that. If it's around storage, I'll talk about SAN and NAS and those sort of things. But what we're gonna to do today is we're gonna cover all of them. So I'm gonna cover each one of the categories that I generally cover. Um, if you can answer these questions, that's great. I think it's a good starting point if you're gonna go look for a systems engineer position. So let's start off with Windows Server. First question is what is DNS? I need to understand what DNS is. I wanna ask you what a DNS server is in a business. So I'm not talking about a DNS server up on the internet that just changes the name to you know, the, the, the DNS name to uh, the host name to a um, to an IP address. I want to know about the DNS server on my, on my server in house, my Active Directory server. What does it do? Talk to me about some, some different um, DNS name records, you know, an A name, a C name, a PTR, those sort of things. Simple question, but how does a computer on a network, on a corporate network, get its IP address? A lot of people don't know. Oh, it just picks it from some random place. The general answer is gonna be from a DHCP server, um, but that's the sort of question I'm gonna be asking. Two places, DHCP, or you can set up a static IP address DHCP could be set up on a network device such as a router in a smaller company or more in a DHCP server um, in a larger business. This is a bit more of a um, troubleshooting type of question, but if I had two servers on a network that have connectivity problems, how do I um, diagnose what's wrong? Let's say I've got an application server and a web server that were able to communicate with each other previously, but now cannot communicate. So I wanna sort of look for um, what sort of troubleshooting steps this individual is going to follow. You know, are they gonna be checking physical ports? Are they gonna be checking, you know, routes from one to another? Can it ping each other? Um, you know, are the drivers failed? Uh, is the database services stopped? Like, I wanna to try to diagnose what's going on. So I'm sort of gonna, I'm going to gauge really the troubleshooting ability to try to diagnose a fault between two systems. I'll then talk a little bit about server patching. You know, it's very important that we have servers patched. If I've got somebody coming into the team that has never done server patching, well, you know, it's a bit of a concern to me because I would expect that any system engineer has done some form of server patching in their career. Um, what tools do you use for server patching? Are you doing you know, WSAS? Are you doing SCCM? Are you using other third-party provider tools to do your server patching? Are you patching um, you know, other systems? Like are you patching Linux? Are you patching Mac? Are you patching you know, you, you, your networking, your storage, those sort of things as well. But I wanna think about um, what sort of tools that they use, but also how do they do patching? Do they do, they, you know, do it in groups? Do they do development first, then test? then production, uh, what's the order, do they have to be done out of hours, during business hours. I wanna know about Microsoft Patch Tuesday. They should know what Patch Tuesday is about as well. Now that we're talking about Microsoft and Windows Server, I'll cut into Active Directory. I really would expect somebody to understand what Active Directory is, tell me what the structure of Active Directory is, what it's used for, um, what I can do with it, etc. Understanding the difference between an AD Forest 
uh, and an AD domain. So what is an AD forest? I want somebody to be able to tell me what that is. Bit of a trick question, but what is the difference between a domain admin and an enterprise admin? Question that I generally like to ask people. A lot of people don't realize that an enterprise admin is higher than a domain admin. Why do I need to set up a domain trust? Very good question. A lot of people don't know. You should know. This is me trying to gauge what they know about um, a particular tool, which we'll cover. But if I have computers on the network, I've got 200 computers on my network, or a thousand computers on my network, users, right? Uh, and they've all got a set password that they reset every 60 days, every 90 days, what have you. And I need to change the complexity of that password for everybody. I want everybody's password to be more complex from the next month. How do I do that? Simple answer is group policy. You do it all via group policy. I then want to ask about group policy. Tell me some other group policies that you've created in the past. Uh, what can I do with group policy? What's the benefit of group policy? And then I move into virtualization. What sort of virtualization technologies are you familiar with, right? So I want to talk about things like VMware, Hyper-V, Citrix, three, three big ones. There are others, but they're the three big ones. Uh, a lot of places will generally focus a lot more on VMware. So I like to, because in most places that I have worked, we have used VMware as a primary uh, virtualization suite. I tend to focus more on VMware technology uh, and terminology and understand what VMware does. But from a virtualization perspective, I'll just ask general questions around what is virtualization? What are the benefits of virtualization? Why would I pick a physical server over a virtual server, right? If I had to deploy 10 new servers, which one should go physical, which one should go virtual, and why? I talk about what their past experience is with virtualization, how big their environments have been. If they were, you know, if they were managing 10 virtual servers versus a guy that's been managing 1,000 or 10,000 virtual servers in a team of virtual experts, um, I'm generally going to lean towards a guy that's managed a lot more. But if the guy that's only managed 10 can give me a good enough explanation of you know, virtualization, that's also good. Because I'm catering this to VMware, I'll ask things like um, you know, st stuff that are standard to uh, VMware. Uh, what is vMotion? What is a virtual switch? What is the difference between a standard and a distributed switch? What's DRS? What's EVC? Uh, a lot of these terminologies around virtualization and VMware um, are pretty good, as, good, uh, good to know. Once I've covered a lot of the virtualization, I'll move on to cloud, right? So I've got physical, virtual, cloud, and all everything in between. Talk to me about cloud. What is cloud? What are the benefits of using cloud over on-prem, on-premise? You know, why would I pick certain services to be on the cloud, other services to be on-prem? Uh, if we're talking about cloud, I'm more thinking enterprise cloud. So I'm thinking of tools such as Amazon's um, AWS, and Microsoft Azure um, as the two main leaders, right? So I'm gonna talk about those two. What are the benefits of going cloud, right? What is the difference between AWS and Azure? Which one would you pick and why? We used a scenario before with virtualization. If I've got to deploy 10 new servers, you know, um, one of my, my senior directors says, look, we need to build 10 new servers for this new whatever, this new application that we want to deploy out to our customers in the next two, three months. Uh, you've got to build 10 servers. What do you do? Do you build them all in the cloud? Do you build some of them on-prem? Why would I build some on-prem and some um, on the cloud? Tell me the reasons why I would have one over the other. Why would I have a mix? And then depending on the technology, if it's uh, AWS, if I'm using AWS in my company and I'm interviewing for AWS uh, experience, I maybe ask specific questions around AWS. You know, For example, what is EC2? What is an S3? And talk to me about that. We then move into the category of storage and backup. I want to know what your experience is around storage. What is a SAN? What is a NAS? What are the differences between SAN and NAS? You know, one is block-based, one is file-based. What are the protocols used in each of these? Uh, last question is around what is a LUN? What is fiber channel? What is iSCSI? Why would I pick one over the other when I'm configuring a SAN? Uh, why would I pick a SAN over a NAS? Those sort of questions. They're really more from a storage perspective, and how you configure a SAN or a NAS. Uh, and then I go into more generalist uh, around storage from, you know, you configure storage on a server or on, an, or on, a, on a storage device. So I need to know things about RAID. What do you know about RAID? What are the different RAID groups? 
What's rate zero? What's rate one? What's rate five? What's rate six? What's rate 10? What's rate 50? What are the different sorts of rates? Why would I pick one over the other? Um, if I'm creating groups of disks on a SAN or a NAS, what RAID would I use? You know, if I've got 50 disks on a SAN, what RAID would I use? What you know, type would I use? And what are the benefits of each? I also talk about connectivity, right? So I've got a SAN on my network. I've got um, my VMware host, my ESXi host, or my Citrix host, what, whatever it is. How do I get my SAN to talk to my host? You know, if I'm using VMware, I've got data stores, which are, you know, for example, physical LUNs or a physical um, SMB share or NFS share um, on a NAS or on a SAN. How do I make them communicate to each other? What are the procedures? Do I use fiber channel? Do I use iSCSI? Do I go via a, you know, a fiber switch? How do I do an iSCSI initiator? Those sort of things. And then we go into backups. What sort of backup technologies are you familiar with? Uh, what uh, vendors have you used? Um, I'll then ask about, uh, you know, what is the difference between a differential, an incremental, and a full backup? I would, I would expect that somebody who's done backups or at least, you know, has worked as a systems administrator, systems engineer, would understand uh, what the difference between an incremental and a full is. A differential is a little bit of a, a bonus to me. What sort of storage medium were you backing up to? Was it, uh, you know, disk based? Was it like a, a NAS? Was it tape was it to an lto6 lto7 going off site was it to a cloud medium talk to me about that how were backups done how often were they done what sort of retention policies uh, did you have in place um, what does a system state backup contain I think that's important a lot of people don't realize what a system state backup contains uh, were you doing um, vm snapshotting were you doing file level backups? How were you backing up your database? Really for any systems engineer, um, I'm gonna ask those questions, right? They're the, the bulk of the questions. I then have a few bonus questions where I sort of like to ask them around networking and Linux. They're sort of the two other areas that I like to ask. If they've got experience in those technologies, that to me is a bonus. So I think they should at least know about Windows Server. They should know about you know things like Active Directory, storage, cloud. They should know, um, uh, what else did I talk about? Uh, backups, those sort of things. Um, that's, I think, to me is elementary, right? But if they know about networking, brilliant. You know, talk to them about networking. Um, what's, a, what's a switch? Like, well, what's, a, what's a dumb switch? What's a managed switch? What are the differences? Uh, what is a router? You know, a lot of people don't even know. Well, what's a router? I don't know. It's just something that I just plug my computer into and it just connects me to the internet. Uh, well, no, I need to know what a router is. Give it, give it to me in a bit more technical uh, form, what a router is. Um, I ask what a uh, VLAN is. Why would I need to use a VLAN? Do you know any uh, routing protocols? You know, if, if you've ever worked with routers or networking, you've maybe heard of, you know, RIP, you've maybe heard of BGP, you've heard of these different sorts of routing protocols. Um, maybe talk to me about that. I ask them about what QOS is, quality, quality of service. Um, what is it? Why do I use it? What's the benefit of it? And then I also like to ask them about the OSI model. This is more of a theory-based model. Um, a lot of people generally will follow the OSI model without even realizing that they're following the OSI model, you know, in basic troubleshooting, but at least be able to explain to me some of those, you know, levels in the OSI model. And then I just uh, finish on Linux. Again, if they've got Linux skills, great. Again, this is dependent on the business. If you've got no Linux servers in your environment, uh, if the company that you're perhaps, you know, interviewing for don't even have Linux and you won't even get Linux questions. But if they do have Linux, even a small presence, be prepared to maybe answer some Linux questions. So these are the questions I like to ask is, what is Linux? Simple question, what is it? Uh, I wanna hear things about open source. I wanna hear things about the different flavors of Linux. You know, you've got Red Hat, you've got CentOS, you've got all these Ubuntu, you've got all these other different flavors of Linux. Uh, I wanna hear about what are the benefits of uh, open source? What are the benefits of picking Linux over Windows over Mac, right? We used a scenario before. I've got 10 servers to deploy. Uh, would I build them all in Windows or would I build some in Linux? 
you know, Linux can be cheaper. It can be more, you know, friendly with resources. I can do more from a resource, resource perspective um, than I can on a Windows box, for example. Bit of a trick question, but what is the difference between Linux and Unix? You know, then knowing that, well, the back end of Linux is Unix. And then I just ask them a simple question, how do I um, change a permission on a Linux server? You know, what's a basic change command? How do I navigate? How do I make a new directory? How to delete a directory? Um, and then I ask them what a cron job is, you know, around scheduling tasks, those sort of things. So that is really my overview. There are my questions. Um, I'd love it if you commented, you know, comment below. I am a very interactive sort of person. I'd love to hear your thoughts. I'm happy to comment back. Um, if there's any questions that you think uh, shouldn't have been asked, you know, if, if you think there are questions that maybe are a bit too harsh to ask somebody, uh, maybe they don't need to know that. Um, if there are questions that you think I should be asking, you know, when I'm, when I'm doing interviewing, if there are any questions that are beneficial to you, questions that you've been asked when you've gone to interviews and you haven't been able to answer, feel free to ask me as well. But they're really the questions that I generally ask when I'm interviewing for a systems engineer. So look, love, like my video, would really appreciate it. Comment below, let me know your thoughts. Subscribe to my channel, Digital Bike Computing, for a whole bunch of more videos. And we will talk to you next time. So if you found that video helpful, please like it and subscribe to my channel, Digital Bike Computing, just on the button there for more videos.